why I'm uh, as much a projectionist as I am a filmmaker. I, uh, apart from being a lawyer, you have to go to court all the time. But, uh, but I, yeah, I, I spend a lot of time showing these films because uh, there is no ready-made mechanism in India to show these films. On the net is okay, but on the net is a good idea in the future, but as yet in India, very few people have computers. I mean, only the elite have computers, so internet access and all that for long format films. I mean, what you find on YouTube is usually very short films. So some of my short films I've already put on YouTube. Um, but it's important for the young generation. Yeah, but and I'm, I'm trying to find out, I'm trying to, uh, eventually I will uh, have free streaming on my website so that people can watch the films. Uh, and, and I might put a PayPal button for those who want to contribute if they feel like it, but it's not necessary to contribute to watch it. So that's my future, one of the future projects is to make the films uh, accessible. But I've heard the films have been screened all over India and that not a day goes by almost without the films being screened all over India. Yeah. And in fact, Jaibin Comrade's premiere was in Bombay in the, um, um, I was just saying that the, um, um, that the film is, the films, as far as I have known from knowing your work for many years, that the films are constantly shown in India and constantly shown um, in, in kind of, um, not in cinemas, in kind of public spaces as well. Um, so Jaibin Comrade, for instance, was shown in Ramabai, was it, am I pronouncing Colony, yeah. The col Ramabai Colony. Um, from where the, the whole story um, comes out of that that place, and the premiere of that of the film was there, shown there, and there was three two thousand to three thousand people standing and watching it, um, which puts um, Western audiences to shame if they consider such an incredible detailed masterpiece, um, three hours to be such a long film that they get exhausted by or something. I mean, it, it, the people are standing and watching. Um, this film, and actually what's incredible about the film, which people will see, is that you see people watching events. Um, as I actually say, that's a continuous thread in Alan's work, is watching people watching, um, which gives also another layer to the subject. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's true, especially, I mean, various of my films have been used uh, widely within quotation marks. I say, they are, you're right, that they are shown every day somewhere. There, there are already hundreds, if not thousands, of DVDs that people have. Uh, and I spend a lot of my, I mean, in a week I would say at least two or three screenings happen. Two, two screenings on an average, which are public screenings. And we have our own projector. Even when I was shooting 16 of them, we had our own 16 of them projector that we would carry our big reels and set them up and show them. And now that this video is easier, and uh, and we just put up big sh big bed sheets as a screen, and show them show the films anywhere wherever there's electricity. Uh, but India's population is huge, and <laughs> I would say that I don't think that I've reached uh, even 0.01 percent of the population, even doing so many screens all the time. So. Really, if you want to make a political difference, it has to be on TV. And that's why we've been fighting tooth and nail to get the film shown on TV. I mean, the TV experience of watching uh, is different from, obviously, when we show it and we are there and we have discussions afterwards, all that can't happen on TV. It's just a passive medium. But even a passive medium is very useful for a film like this where it it will shake people up in terms of their ideas about these issues. So, so we keep fighting for that, and sometimes we succeed on to get on the national TV. Merci. Je crois qu'on doit quitter la salle. On va remercier beaucoup Alain et Christophe. Je tiens à remercier Alain pour consacrer au travail d'Anand Pagnardal. Merci. Et je tiens à remercier beaucoup de venir un dimanche soir euh, tard pour un long film euh, sur des sujets complexes. Voilà, ça dit bien le, la motivation des spectateurs du cinéma du réel.
Donc on, on explore, euh, grâce à Anand Padvardan, les, les lignes de tension contemporaine euh, les plus violentes qui règnent en Inde, mais aussi au-delà de, de l'Inde, en, en Asie du Sud-Est, et là, avec euh, War and Peace, donc le, un film réalisé par Anand en, en 2002. Euh, on a peut-être... Euh, euh, son film qui est le plus, en quelque sorte, euh, explicitement internationaliste, parce que personnellement je pense que les conflits locaux que nous décrivent ces autres films euh, voilà, servent, peuvent servir souvent de modèle explicatif aussi, ou, ou de grille de lecture pour d'autres situations. C'est très facilement transposable, euh, là pour ce qui concerne par exemple le, le fanatisme ou euh, les problèmes de patriarchie, etc. Euh, ici, voilà, le monde est exploré vraiment de... Euh, enfin, est parcouru de manière euh, géopolitique euh, explicitement et donc Anand a beaucoup travaillé sur ce film euh, pendant, pendant 4 ans et je lui laisse donc le, le soin de nous le présenter euh, voilà, de sa manière si claire euh, visuelle merci beaucoup Anand So this uh, film was uh, started because in May 1998, uh, India did nuclear tests. This film started because in May 1998, India started doing tests. I don't know if you might remember that in 1996 there was a uh, comprehensive test ban treaty which long ago India had championed a test ban so that there would be no more nuclear tests anywhere in the world. And after more than uh, a majority of the countries in the world had signed this CTBT, the Comprehensive Test Ban Treaty, suddenly in 1996, India uh, refused to sign it, even though it had been one of the original authors. Oui, je ne sais pas si vous vous souvenez, mais en 96, euh, l'Inde a refusé de ratifier le traité euh, contre le, les armements, le, 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 les essais nucléaires. Euh, mais en, au début, euh, le pays avait assisté à la rédaction de ce, ce traité. And perhaps they were inspired by France, because France had done the same thing. They had done nuclear tests in, in Mururoa, in New Zealand, and the at the time when the world was stopping to do nuclear tests. Et je ne sais pas s'ils ont suivi l'exemple de la France. Si vous vous souvenez, la France a commencé à faire des tests nucléaires ou continué à nous en Nouvelle-Zélande juste au moment où on essayait de euh, appliquer ce traité. Uh, so when India did nuclear tests in May 1998, um, we saw suddenly on the streets of India people celebrating the fact that we had become a superpower. Et donc en mai 1998, euh, on a tout d'un coup euh, vu euh, exploser dans la rue euh, une joie de la part de la population euh, du fait que l'Inde était devenue un superpuissance. Along with many other activists, I was totally depressed by the sight, and we started to do small protests against the nuclear bomb. Et euh, avec d'autres militants. Euh, on était vraiment très goûté à cette réaction, donc on a euh, monté plusieurs euh, petites protestations contre euh, la bombe. Uh, I also started filming both the uh, madness in the street, the celebrations, uh, but also the beginnings of the anti-nuclear movement. Donc euh, j'ai commencé à filmer euh, en même temps euh, cette folie de célébration euh, dans la rue, euh, mais aussi la naissance, mais aussi la naissance. Uh, du mouvement uh, anti-nucléaire. Uh, even before the nuclear tests, uh, uh, by the way, two weeks after the Indian nuclear tests, Pakistan also did nuclear tests to match India's. Oui, à propos, uh, deux semaines après les essais nucléaires de l'Inde, uh, le Pakistan a fait de même uh, pour se, se mettre à la hauteur de l'Inde. And so began a nuclear arms race in the region. 
donc euh, a commencé à ce moment-là une course aux armements nucléaires euh, régionales. Uh, even before this nuclear test, uh, I was part of a uh, peace movement between <coughs> India and Pakistan. We tried to build people-to-people -people relations between the two countries, although our governments had always, <coughs> since independence, had either done a hot war or a cold war. Et en fait, avant le, les essais euh, nucléaires, euh, je faisais partie euh, d'un mouvement euh, propé euh, qui continuait. On essayait de développer des liens inter, enfin, entre personnes euh, en même temps que les deux gouvernements euh, s'engageaient euh, depuis l'indépendance, euh, soit dans une guerre froide et dans une guerre chaude. Uh, after both countries did nuclear tests, it became even more necessary to build peace and so we tried uh, to exchange visits between peace activists of India and Pakistan. Et une fois euh, les, les essais nucléaires lancés des deux côtés, on a essayé de renforcer euh, ces échanges, ces visites euh, euh, anti-nucléaires euh, entre le Pakistan et l'Inde. And, and in 1999, I got my first chance to visit Pakistan uh, as part of a peace delegation of uh, citizens. Et en 1999, la, la première occasion s'est présentée pour que j'aille euh, avec le mouvement pour la paix, euh, un mouvement citoyen pour la paix, euh, au Pakistan. Et j'ai pris mon, mon, ma caméra euh, qui avait l'air d'une un, petite caméra de tourisme, donc j'ai pu euh, franchir la frontière euh, avec, avec ça. Uh, so I filmed, ended up filming in India and Pakistan both. Uh, uh, and then uh, one other thing happened soon after the nuclear tests is that the sur Japanese survivors of the atom bomb in Hiroshima and Nagasaki, they visited us. They are, the survivors are called Hibakusha. And they, uh, whenever any country does nuclear tests, uh, the Hibakusha will go to those countries to tell people what their experience of the bomb had been. Uh, for instance, they came to France after Mururoa, and they came to India and Pakistan after we did our tests in 1998. Et une troisième chose qui s'est présentée, c'était une visite des survivants de Hiroshima et euh, euh, Nagasaki euh, en Inde. Ils sont venus, une petite délégation. Euh, ils s'appellent les Habukisha. Hibakusha. Hibakusha. Euh, et c'est leur habitude, en fait, de rendre visite à chaque pays qui a fait des essais nucléaires. Comme ils sont venus en France après Mogoroa et ils sont venus en Inde après Motas Ami. Um, and uh, when they saw that I had a camera and was filming their meetings in India, they asked me to come back to Hiroshima and Nagasaki during the commemoration of the atom bomb. And they invited Pakistanis also to that event. Et quand ils ont vu que je filmais euh, euh, leur réunion en Inde, ils, ils m'ont invité à me rendre euh, au Japon euh, au moment de la cérémonie des commémorations. Euh, euh, de Hiroshima et Nagasaki au Japon et en même temps ils ont aussi invité des Pakistanais euh, donc on venait des deux côtés. Uh, they not only paid our tickets but they looked after us and I was uh, uh, so I filmed and ended up filming in Hiroshima and Nagasaki but then having done that I wanted to understand why America dropped these bombs in the first place uh, because they're the only country that has dropped atom bombs on human beings. Donc euh, ils nous ont payé le voyage, on a été bien reçus, euh, mais après avoir filmé à Hiroshima et à Nagasaki, quand même je me suis posé des questions, euh, mais pourquoi les États-Unis euh, ont largué cette bombe atomique J'avais besoin de comprendre, parce que c'est le seul pays en fait qui a euh, lâché la bombe. Donc à un point, quand j'étais invité à l'Amérique pour montrer mes films dans certains collèges, was able to film in America um, about this issue. Et donc quand euh, j'ai eu l'occasion de me rendre euh, aux États-Unis, j'ai montré ce film, enfin, j'ai montré ce film dans des facultés, dans des universités, 
et j'ai pu euh, explorer un tout petit peu plus loin le, euh, comment eux ils voyaient la question de la vente. So the film ended up being filmed in four countries over four years. It was completed in 2002. And Donc euh, le film, j'ai réalisé ce film pendant quatre ans dans quatre pays différents. Euh, je l'ai terminé en 2002. Uh, and uh, by this time, the uh, uh, not by this time, right from 98, uh, there was a Hindu right-wing party in power in India. And uh, under their government, uh, the film uh, did not pass the necessary censor certificate requirement. So, in other words, the film was was not allowed to be legally not allowed to be shown. Et depuis euh, de 98, euh, le pouvoir euh, en Inde, euh, il y avait le parti euh, de droite qui était au pouvoir, et donc euh, le film n'a pas reçu euh, l'autorisation d'être projeté, diffusé. Uh, but we went to court and we won the case after one year. So in uh, April 2003, it became legal to show the film. Euh, donc euh, on, on est allé devant la justice et ils nous ont donné raison. Donc en avril 2003, on était légalement autorisé à montrer le film. Uh, much later, it, uh, it won a national award in India, it won an award even in Pakistan. And it was even shown both on Indian TV after we had won a court case, and it was shown also on Pakistani TV. Um, so, and there was a Panel discussion that followed. Et le film a gagné deux prix, un prix national en Inde et un prix national au Pakistan aussi. Et il a été diffusé euh, donc en Inde euh, sur la, à la télévision nationale et aussi au Pakistan. La télévision pakistanaise l'a aussi montré avec un débat euh, après le film. Ordinarily, I would have told you some of this after the screening, but I might not be here for the Q&A um, tonight. But we will do a Q&A tomorrow night after you see uh, those of you who can make it tomorrow. Uh, the, the new film, uh, Jaibin Comrade, which is on the caste system. Uh, puisque je ne serai pas là pour uh, le débat, uh, un débat suivant cette projection, euh, je vous ai raconté pas mal maintenant. Si vous intéressez dans un, une séance euh, questions-réponses, euh, je serai là demain pour montrer euh, mon dernier film, Jumping Cam Comrade. Euh, si vous voulez discuter de ce film à ce moment-là, on peut. Le uh, film est en deux parties, mais ils vont faire les deux parties immédiatement après. Il y aura quelques secondes de gap entre les parties 1 et 2. Oui, et il y a deux parties pour ce film. Normalement, ça s'enchaîne. Peut-être est-ce qu'il y aura un tout petit, euh, euh, une toute petite intervalle euh, entre les deux ce soir, je ne sais pas. And also at the end of the film, um, don't get up during the credits because there's an epilogue at the end. <laughs> oui, surtout ne, ne partez pas à la fin du film euh, pendant euh, les, les titres de fin parce qu'il y a quand même un épilogue. Il y a une fin. Après. Yeah. Uh, okay. Very quickly. Anybody wants to start? We just want to die now. <laughs> If there's anything you didn't understand or um, were not sure about, you can ask. Otherwise, if you if you understood everything, it's no problem. And you didn't see it. <laughs> yeah. Well, let somebody else ask. <laughs> well, maybe I can ask a first question. Uh, okay. Well, well, yeah. well the yeah. emotion well, is, uh, in a way, you know, okay. it's too strong. Yeah. I think for now. Uh, how did you choose the people you met and interview for these films all over the countries? I mean, uh, were, were there organizations or, or mm -hmm. it was by coincidence sometimes? Or coincidence most of the time. There, of course, I was 
I went to Pakistan with the peace movement, uh, peace delegation from India. I went to Japan with the peace, invited by the peace movement in Japan. Uh, America, I went on my own, um, and I, you know, I tried to get an interview with the the aerospace, the the uh, Air Force, but they, as you saw, they didn't they didn't want to do an interview. So then I looked for the historians. Yeah, so. It, more or less, I just followed the logic of what I was doing at that moment. Mm -hmm. So it was more your intuition and necessity. And yeah, intuition and, and whatever I read. I, I read as I read that book about Hiroshima called Hiroshima's Shadow, mm -hmm. uh, which was uh, in which I learned about this exhibition in Smithsonian, which was which was censored. So then I followed that story. Pardon, je me rends compte qu'on parle en anglais. Et j'espère que tout le monde sait mieux l'anglais que moi et que personne n'a besoin de traduction. Non Et vous avez besoin de, de traduction Non. Il n'y a pas de. Si, si, si c'est vrai. Rapidement. Ah, rapidement. <rire> que dit les, dit les Bala, notre experte traductrice. Donc, j'ai demandé à. Donc, je vais faire moins bien, moi je suis juste une amateur, mais euh, j'ai demandé à Arnaud comment il avait choisi les toutes ces personnes donc il avait interviewé pour le film donc est-ce qu'il avait euh, en quelque sorte euh, travaillé à partir de réseaux d'organisations déjà existantes euh, d'une voilà d'un front anti nucléaire et en fait non enfin euh, ça dépendait il y avait des cas différents mais donc il a surtout rencontré les gens au fur et à mesure de ses voyages et de ses recherches et un des points de repère de sa réflexion c'était ce livre on, dont on a vu la couverture donc le Uh, anyway, even if there are no questions, I actually came back because I wanted to say something. There's a question here. Yeah, okay. I have a question. I want to know if in India, you have a lot of debate the film so do you organize debates uh, thanks to around these films and what are the effects of such a um, this film is now more than 10 years old uh, we did do that in the early days for a few years but I don't show this film so much now because I'm showing my new film now more donc le film a déjà 10 ans il a pas été euh, beaucoup beaucoup discuté et Euh, au début, au début, oui, voilà, merci, aidez-moi. <rire> et maintenant, il s'occupe surtout de son dernier film, donc Chalbin, comme on peut voir which demain is, soir. Which is the film that they show tomorrow, so I'm busy with that, but this film is still shown from time to time. Mais donc, uh, il est quand même vu de temps en temps. And uh, it was shown on television in India, finally, after a lot of fight. Mm -hmm. Donc, il a été vu à la télévision en Inde après beaucoup de censure et de combat. And DVDs of it are available in many places. Et on peut en trouver le DVD dans beaucoup d'endroits. Yeah, so what I wanted to say is that uh, this film was made 2002 when the right-wing BJP was in power. Donc le film a été fait en 2002 quand le BJP était au pouvoir. In 2004, the BJP lost the election. The Congress government, which is not meant to be right-wing Hindu fundamentalists, came to power. Et donc en, en 2004, c'est un, un nouveau gouvernement, euh, donc pas d'extrême de, droite ou de droite qui est venu au pouvoir. Uh, but nothing changed on the nuclear front. In fact, on the nuclear front, all the ruling parties are in agreement that they want to be a superpower. Uh, and in fact, the new Congress government made a deal with the United States of America uh, to increase. Uh, you know that, anyway, you translate because otherwise... Just to say that it's exactly the same in France. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I'm coming to that. Donc, il n'y a eu aucun changement dans les décisions concernant le pouvoir nucléaire. Tous les pouvoirs sont d'accord et ils font des accords. Ils passent des accords avec les les États-Unis. Yeah. Uh, so they made a nuclear deal with the United States by which... Uh, you know that after India did nuclear tests in 1998, there were sanctions put on India and Pakistan because they broke the uh, they they uh, they broke their promise and they did nuclear testing. 
So because of that, there were sanctions put. But when the Americans signed an agreement with India, the sanctions were lifted. Now we're allowed to buy uranium from anywhere. So we're buying it from Australia. We're buying. We are in. We are in talks with many countries for supplies, and and the plans to make more and more nuclear reactors are going ahead. Encore en 1999, il y a eu des sanctions contre l'Inde quand elle a fait des tests nucléaires, et puis ensuite, donc quand elle a passé ses accords avec les États-Unis, voilà, tout le monde s'est retiré du traité anti-prolifération, et au contraire, maintenant l'Inde peut acheter de l'uranium partout dans le monde, en Australie. And, and every nuclear reactor is a potential disaster in any case uh, for many reasons, not just because there's a, always a slight leakage that happens at the best of times, but many of these reactors in India are now being built on the coastline, uh, which is sometimes on an earthquake uh, type, uh, place, like a tsunami can happen, like happened in Fukushima. Je, je regrette d'avoir un très bien. <rire> Donc, euh, l'Inde ne cesse de construire des centrales nucléaires. Il les construit maintenant sur les côtes. Et donc, il y a des fuites. Enfin, oui, non seulement il y a des fuites, de toute façon, dans les centrales. Les quelques, c'est ça, c'est des, yeah. des fuites. Et euh, donc, elle construit des centrales sur les côtes, euh, donc maritimes, mais aussi sur des lignes de failles tectoniques, donc euh, comme à Fukushima. And uh, the two big reactors that are being built, one is by the Russians in uh, Kudankulam in the south of India, and one is in near Bombay in Maharashtra, which is being built by the French, by the Arriva, uh, Arriva Corporation, and they're building the world's biggest nuclear plant on the, on the tsunami uh, fault line, I mean, uh, uh, earthquake fault line. So we are like the Korean little girls. We apologize, but it's not useful. Donc, il y a deux énormes centrales nucléaires principales en Inde. Donc, alors je ne sais pas les noms des villes. Donc, dans le sud, dans le sud, et près de près de Mumbai. Et donc, évidemment, elle présente un risque majeur dans les deux cas. Donc, la première construite par les Russes. Et la seconde par les Français, par Areva. Yeah, and uh, and there's a big movement against Areva uh, going on right now, mainly led by the fisher people. Donc un, un grand mouvement de protestation contre Areva mené par les pêcheurs. Uh, and so also in the south of India, it's the fishing community uh, that is fighting against the nuclear plant. So they are in the vanguard of the movement for against nuclear energy. Et donc dans le sud aussi. Uh, le mouvement est mené par, par les pêcheurs, le mouvement anti-nucléaire. And, and nuclear energy is a myth in the sense, especially in a country like India, uh, after 60 years of nuclear program, we make only 2.5% from nuclear. Donc avec toute cette industrie nucléaire, l'énergie ne sert quand même qu'à 2,5% de, de la production électrique. Et donc la l'énergie nucléaire, enfin le, le pouvoir nucléaire est un pur mythe. After spending huge amount of money and uh, with huge dangers, uh, but even in the short time that we had wind power, we're already making 5% from that. Et donc en revanche, euh, après juste une brève période d'installation, la force euh, éolienne produit déjà 5% de l'énergie nécessaire. So it's so it's completely wrong to think that nuclear energy is the way to go forward because it's the most expensive form of energy today in the world. Donc l'énergie nucléaire c'est la la l'énergie la forme d'énergie la plus coûteuse euh, et la moins productive en fait. Uh, and uh, so the real reason why countries like India Uh, go for the nuclear option is because it is a dual technology because they can get the plutonium to make weapons. Donc euh, la seule raison en réalité de maintenir euh, et de faire croître cette énergie, c'est de c'est parce qu'elle est dual, donc euh, euh, produire de l'énergie mais surtout produire des armes. Uh, and apart from all the other dangers, there's the danger of, of the fact that if you have so many reactors, it's very hard to keep it very safe because somewhere someone can get hold of that material. 
and in the in this day and age when there's all kinds of terror in the world mm -hmm. it's crazy to think of what can happen if somebody gets hold of that material mm -hmm. donc évidemment c'est il euh, y a une sorte de de production d'arsenal d'armes potentielles et à un moment euh, euh, où le, les, comment dire, les, les pôles terroristes euh, se multiplient, évidemment c'est fou de penser que voilà, ces armes vont rester inemployées, enfin, en tout cas potentiellement elles peuvent l'être facilement. Voilà, avez-vous des questions sur notre avenir Sur un endroit que nous do Look, I only think that we are doing, we are not doing enough, but the people in India who are affected are fighting against the nuclear powers. And I think that people in France have to fight against your own power, because it's not, it, I mean, there's no use us worrying about some other country or you worrying about another country. You have it right home. So at home, you can build a stronger anti-nuclear movement. The, the, the sad fact of the, of all this is that there was a very strong anti-nuclear movement until the point when the Soviet Union collapsed. Until the point when the West thought that, oh, there might be a nuclear war and the bomb might fall on us. They used to come out and hundreds of thousands of people to protest. But when the Cold War ended and Soviet Union was defeated, it became safe for, people think that it became safe. So you don't have to worry about nuclear bomb falling on you anymore. But that's the wrong way of thinking. I think. Donc, euh, chacun peut, doit se battre là où il est, comme nous en France, évidemment. Et donc l'erreur, c'est de croire que... Euh, enfin, donc après la fin de la guerre froide et le, le, le démantèlement, euh, la disparition de, de l'URSS, les mouvements anti-nucléaires qui étaient assez puissants auparavant, euh, eux aussi se sont évaporé en partie euh, en croyant que désormais le monde était sûr, ce qui est une erreur euh, d'analyse politique. Could you talk a bit more about the relationship between nuclear energy and nuclear arms? I, I, I just did because you, you, if you have nuclear energy, you create the raw material for uh, nuclear weapons. You get the plutonium because nobody will sell you plutonium, but if you make it in your own reactors, you can hide it and, and make it, even though. There are meant to be international safeguards. There are there are all kinds of uh, regulations about in power plants where to, to make sure that that product doesn't get used in weapons. But it's quite easy to do. I mean, and governments do that. Um, states do that. That is what they're worried about in Iran. They keep talking about <coughs> Iran's going to make a bomb. So it's very easy to do when you when you have nuclear energy. Donc il n'y a pas de réelle différence euh, techniquement entre l'énergie nucléaire civile et, et militaire. Euh, et, du moment qu'on produit du plutonium, de toute façon, on peut fabriquer des armes. Et donc même la garantie d'État euh, de surveiller cette production euh, n'est pas, pas suffisante. On a une question, autre question so how, how do you make the film uh, organize the shooting there are many many names on the credits and so how what is your way to uh, work with other people is it collective or um, many many names but very few on the payroll yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they're, so the same, so. they're friends who helped yeah. or uh, sympathizers a uh, few people on the payroll not many because these films are all made without funding donc beaucoup de gens génériques mais très peu sur les feuilles de paie on va pour voir en qui était hier ouais so has the indian the japanese has the indian uh could the indian 
come and help the French uh, <laughs> against the nuclear power. Yeah, I think so. I think I think yeah. that actually I think that it would be wonderful if there could be a committee started in France against the Ariba plant in India to yeah. to show that uh, you know it will not just be an anti-nuclear movement; it will be anti colonization, it'll be anti everything. Um, so I think that uh, it would be wonderful and there will be people in India to, to join hands if if people here would would start something like that. Would would create an uh, I don't know if Areva makes any other products. <laughs> uh, if, if they do then it's easy because then you can just boycott that product and make it very powerful. So effectivement il faut créer un comité de lutte contre Areva et son programme. Et donc ce ne serait pas seulement une action anti-nucléaire, mais aussi une action anti-colonialiste et anti-impérialiste. Et donc si Areva euh, vend d'autres euh, produits, il faut boycotter ces produits immédiatement. Merci. 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 Merci.